Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to The Cheese Bearer. Tonight, we are going to be trying a Portuguese cheese that's called Queijo de Nisa. So people say that this cheese has a very big flavor, and I'm not exactly sure what that means uh, at the moment, but we'll find out in just a moment. I'm gonna be having it with a white wine and just a little bit of um, dark bread. Because it's Wednesday and you can have wine on Wednesdays because alliteration. So this cheese is kind of interesting in the regard that it is sometimes referred to as a vegetarian cheese. And what people mean by that is they don't use animal rennet to curdle the raw milk when they start to make this cheese. Instead, they infuse the milk with an extract that comes from thistles that are native to Portugal, and that's how they get this cheese to start processing and curdling. Uh, so that's kind of an interesting fact. I have never heard of a cheese that used anything um, aside from animal rennet, but I guess they exist. Uh, you know, it smells, I wanna say it smells like Parmesan, but it's not exactly like Parmesan. So don't let that mislead you into thinking that this is an alternative, because I have no idea. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try this. Cheers. Oh. It's good. It's not what I was expecting, but it is very good. Um, it is slightly reminiscent of a Parmesan. I would say it has a more complex flavor than Parmesan does, but is reminiscent of it. Oh, it's really good on bread. Huh. I'm actually usually not a super fan of harder cheeses. I am totally that person that likes spreadable, soft, squishy cheeses. But I won't lie, this is really pretty good. So one really entertaining thing about this cheese, at least to me, is that we know this cheese has been in production since at least the year 1901. And the only reason why we know that is because it was mentioned in a book that was published in the year 1901 in Portugal. So uh, it's kind of fun that the only real solid documentable history that we have of this very traditional cheese that's been around for a very long time is just a happenstance mention in some piece of Portuguese literature somewhere. Mm. It's really very good. And the more I have it, the better it gets. The rind is really interesting. It, it's more texture than it is anything. This is not a cheese that has a very specific bold rind flavor and then a wholly separate uh, cheese flavor for the core of the cheese. They really sort of come together nicely. Um, it's a little tougher. Um, but no less delicious. Uh, could be a good experiment if you're somebody that isn't terribly sure about the whole rind eating thing. Um, but I like it quite a bit. Another thing I'm really enjoying about this cheese is that it's not quite as dry as a Parmesan is. Um, it has just a touch more moisture to it, so it's not quite as crumbly. You could easily um, shred this like into like actual strings, I believe. I think it would be fine if you wanted to put it um, lightly sprinkled over a salad or something like that. I bet it would be great. Mm -hmm. That's really pretty good. I like this cheese, like a lot. Hmm. I would not, however, say that's it, that it's an alternative to Parmesan. I think it really does have its own specific flavor. The flavor sort of lingers a little longer to me than Parmesan does. So 
so I don't think it's a cheese that you could just sort of put on anything. Um, it does have a particular flavor to it, but I think, um, as I mentioned, bake into a traditional tart, like a cheese tart, I bet it would be phenomenal. Um, I could also see this being paired really, really well with like crude ham or some other really amazing deli meats, and I think it would be phenomenal. Mmm, that's really good. I like it. And now I know how to say the word cheese in Portuguese. Queijo. Was not expecting that. So in the cheese world, as you start trying weirder and weirder cheeses, you'll often find that some of them have different acronyms that are at the end of their names. These are designations that are put forth and maintained um, often by the European Commission at least in the case of Queijo Denisa. Queijo Denisa has a designation that is called the Protected Designation of Origin, which means it is only recognized as Queijo Denisa if, it, uh, if that particular cheese was made in the proper region of Portugal where it originated from. Uh, what this does is it protects consumers, it also protects um, the regions uh, from kind of counterfeit cheese or knockoff cheeses that may be posing and taking away um, some of their notoriety or obviously their, their commerce as well. Uh, but designations are kind of interesting and you can read up on those as well if you would like to. I would describe this cheese as having, I guess that's a, I almost said mildly sharp. That's kind of an oxymoron, isn't it? It is a sharper cheese. I would consider it to have a sharp flavor, but it's not overwhelming. Um, I like that it has a good bite to it. It has a particular flavor to it, and then that bite then sort of transforms into uh, a smoother, um, kind of more well-rounded flavor after just a moment. It's really, it's an excellent cheese. Um, I'm excited about this. I will certainly keep it in mind for future recipes, for future cheese boards that I may make. You could, I imagine that you could really do a lot with this cheese. Really an awesome cheese. Well done, Portugal. Queijo Denisa, go out and see if you can hunt some down and give it a try.